Hi, today we're going to be making a cement triangular planter and the way we're going to make it is by using a mold out of corrugated plastic. Corrugated plastic is an amazing material to use for making a mold. You can't always find a plastic container that's going to be the right size or shape and when that happens corrugated plastic is a great way to go. There's, you can do so much with it. And the other thing I'm going to show you is how to do a copper inlay in the cement. You can catch all of this on my website, artsyprettyplants.com. The full written detailed tutorial is there as well. And also please subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so that you'll be notified each time a new video comes out. Let's start mixing. First cut the corrugated plastic to size, which will be 32 inches long and 3 inches wide. Be sure to cut the length against the grain the way I'm doing here. This will allow you to score and bend this easily. Next, measure the longer sides of the triangle. Measure 11 and 3 quarters for one side and 11 and 3 quarters for the other side. Now score each leg of the triangle by carefully cutting through the top layer of the corrugated plastic. Go ahead and bend the sides together to make sure everything fits together. For this next step, you are making the inner triangle. Just repeat the steps for the outer triangle, but the overall length this time will be 24 and a half inches long and two and a half inches wide. I've listed these dimensions in the description as well as in the full tutorial on my website. Make sure you check that your triangle sizes are proportionate and leave a thick enough of a wall space for the planter. Tape the ends of the triangles together for now. You need to make a lid for the inner mold to create the void for where your soil and plant will go. This will fit inside the smaller triangle. Position the smaller triangle onto the plastic and trace the inside and then cut this out. This should fit nicely just inside the triangle. Now label the top and the sides to correlate with each other. Label them A, B, and C. It will be important to have everything line up when you go to glue this. Now to make the mold for the drainage holes. Cut out a piece of pink foam that is somewhat triangular shaped and a few inches smaller than the bottom piece. Use hot glue to attach it to the bottom. Use an X-Acto to cut holes into the bottom and foam. These holes need to fit drinking straws that we'll be inserting later. I only made two holes, but now that I've tested the planter in real life, three would be better. Cut two straws into three pieces each about four inches long, and insert them into the holes and into the foam. They should be only inserted into the foam, not go all the way through. Now glue the open corrugated edges, and then glue this to the bottom of the triangle. I found it a little easier to do by untaping the triangle temporarily. Music 
Use packing tape to reinforce the edges. The corrugated lines will be visible on your planter unless you cover them with something. To avoid the lines, we'll cut pieces of acetate sheet, which will be the same lengths as the, as the triangle legs. I cut one for the outer mold and one for the inner mold. And then I just cut those to fit the leg lengths. Use spray adhesive to fasten them to the inside of the larger triangle and the outside of the inner triangle. Next, we're going to create the inlay for the copper accent. I placed mine at 5 eighths of an inch from the top. So make a line across the inside of the outer triangle piece that stretches across each leg. Now cut a piece of acetate that is a quarter of an inch wide and trim it to the length of each leg. Then use your spray adhesive to glue those to the lines you marked. Tape each corner of the inner triangle with packing tape. And now glue the top edge at the corrugated areas and glue it to a smooth mat. Check again that the triangles fit properly, then apply packing tape to each corner of the larger triangle. Be sure the triangle gets placed so the acetate inlay is at the bottom. Now glue the outer triangle to the mat. Now we're ready to mix and color the cement. If you have a powdered colorant, add that to the dry mix first. Mix it in and then add water and mix that well. In addition to black, I also added a touch of green. You want the consistency to be like a thick milkshake. Pour it in and be sure to get all the mix down into the sides. Shake and vibrate it to release the air bubbles. I recommend having something like a piece of plywood underneath to assist with this. This way you can lift and tap it.
Since this mold is pretty thick, I recommend letting it cure overnight. Once cured, you can demold. It required a little bit of work to get most of this out, but it really wasn't too bad. I had a little trouble with the bottom, which I'll show you. I did find a chisel and putty knife to be helpful with demolding this. If the acetate inlay is still attached to the cement, just pull it off. Here's the part that required a little extra work and patience. Sand any sharp corners and edges. You can see how glossy the acetate sheet makes the cement. I did end up using a 220 grit regular sanding sponge to take down some of the sheen. This also darkens the cement. And finally, add the copper inlay. Just cut three strips to fit the inlay. Next, you will want to mask off the cement that isn't part of the inlay. Use a two-part epoxy glue to adhere the strips to the cement. Apply the glue to the strip first, then press it to the cement inlay. Use a craft stick to help press the copper into the inlay. If you get some glue on the copper or even the cement, just use acetone to wipe it off with. You can just dip your Q-tip into a little bit of acetone and rub. Let the glue dry for at least 30 minutes before removing the tape. And there you have your beautiful cement and copper planter.